I think he's getting a little bigger. Yeah, I looks a little bigger when you were just holding him on the chair. Yeah, we are building it today. All right, a box arrived. Not running shoes. You better believe it. It is. What is it, boys? It's the baby car seat. That's right. This is going to be Michael's car seat because Michael's car seat is going to become Henry's car seat. So here we go. All right, boys. Exactly. I'll pull. Pull. Ugh. Yeah, it says 5 to 45 pounds for the rear facing. Okay. What? This is your new car seat, Michael. <laughs> That's fine with me. That's fine with me. You would think after uh, seven, eight years of car seat installation that I would have it down to a science. Every time it's a, it's a brand new learning experience, probably because all the car seats are different. Yes. Oh my gosh, you know. You know if you've <laughs> if you've installed car seats, it's uh it's like uh riding a bull at a rodeo. It's like you're wrestling and you're yeah, I definitely uh, I don't think I'll go to the gym today. Uh, you got to make sure it's nice and cinched down nice and tight. Uh, I mean, it's just like a non-stop workout. Uh, oh my gosh. We did it. Listen, everyone, this is real life, all right? This is real life here. Yes, do we give our children food in the car seat? You better believe it. Goldfish, peanuts, raisins, craisins, some Fruit Loop action. <laughs> Listen, sometimes kids are screaming in the car and you just give them food, you just give them food. So, but we do, we do clean the car seats every now and then, every now and then. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pretty much when a, uh, a new, uh, new kiddo arrives on the scene. All right, there we go. Back from the run, back to the studio, realizing we're missing we're missing a shoe here. Got to fill this in. There we go. They put a Mizuno in there. Uh, nice and easy day out there on the uh, slippery streets of Denver. Still a little icy out there, but it's starting to melt a little bit. Uh, so four miles today, 8.30 a mile. And the goal of today's run is to warm up the legs so that when I go back inside here in a minute, I can stretch and foam roll to get those legs happy for tomorrow's run, which will also be easy before the hard run again on Monday, and there is the mileage uh, that I have put into the Skechers Go Run Ride 8 into the shoes right there on your screen and also in kilometers. So whenever you see the shoes listed and the miles, that's how many miles I have put into that particular pair of shoes. All right, here we go, everyone. The tune-up race has been chosen for leading into the Hamburg Marathon. It took me a while, but I have made the decision. So just so everyone knows, uh, in well, first of all, I'm transitioning from the uh, from the trail running and ultra running to the road running. And last fall was my first marathon, the Amsterdam Marathon. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not do a tune-up race before one of my peak races of 2019. Why? Because I was in New Hampshire racing the U.S. Mountain Running Championships. So I simply didn't have enough time to work it into my schedule. Craziness. And so just so everyone knows, you've got your peak races and you've got your, uh, your tune-up races. And then you kind of also just have your fun races, you know, that's another category. But in a calendar year, I like to have three peak races, all right? Two marathons and yes, a mountain race. So this year it's the uh, Hamburg Marathon, the New York City Marathon, and then in between is going to be the Pikes Peak Marathon, a mountain race. So before a big peak race, uh, if you can work it into your schedule, doing a tune-up race is a really great idea. And what's the goal of a tune-up race? To get your leg turnover going in a race environment, and also for me to get myself mentally prepared 
for that race day experience where you're just in the zone and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, so and no matter the distance, whether, you're, whether your peak race is a 5K or whether it's a 50 miler, it's really a great idea to do tune up races. And so for marathons, in an ideal world, you do a, 13, a half marathon, 13.1 mile uh, tune up race three weeks before the marathon. Maybe four weeks, definitely not two weeks. So three weeks from what I've read and the research I've done is the, is really a, a great window to shoot for before your actual marathon peak race. Why is that? Uh, if it's four weeks, the benefit that you're going to receive uh, from the turnover and recruiting those fast twitch muscle fibers as much as possible is going to start to depreciate if it's too far away from that peak race date. And then if it's too close, like two weeks away, it's just your legs aren't, aren't going to recover in time for the race, the peak race day. So therefore, I've been searching and looking around and it's been a crazy like it's just it's tough. Colorado is really not a, there's not a lot of amazing road racing going on. First of all, we live at elevation. So a lot of people don't like to travel to Colorado for racing because it's elevation and they're not gonna run as fast. But also we have a really difficult winter and spring season as well as a lot of other places around the world. But it's just like tough to do really high performance racing in Colorado. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So therefore, I'm look, I've been looking for a half marathon three weeks. And if, you, if I'm looking at my calendar, it's March 28th or 29th. And also, I, I've been looking for good weather and as low, you know, low elevation, as low as possible. So those were, and also, oh yeah, also, with baby Henry on the way, I've been looking for a race that is close. Um, and a race that a lot, so Bridget's mom is coming out from Chicago um, the week of March 28th and 29th. So therefore, I'm going to zip off for one night to this location I'm about to tell you. And it's at 400 feet of elevation. And basically, it's my tune-up race for the Hamburg Marathon. We, we can do, well, I'm going to be in, okay, I'll just tell you, it's the Irving Texas Irving Texas half marathon there you go that is the tune-up race for my Hamburg marathon it's flat it's a very flat course it's 400 feet of elevation so pretty you know not dead sea level but pretty low um, and the weather looks amazing like the weather looks absolutely spot on so not too hot not too cold and so there you go so if you live in the greater Dallas Fort Worth Irving area um, I'm going to be there on March 28th uh, for my tune-up race. I cannot wait. And so I will come up with a game plan for the group run. And I think what's going to happen is we might do the group run for the warm-up or the cool-down uh, either, you know, before the race or after the race. All right. So let me know if you are racing the, uh, the Irving marathon or half marathon. Let me know down in the comments and it's just going to be a great time. So shout out to Texas. And two more points real quick is that I found this race through halfmarathons.net. Just so you know, halfmarathons.net. If you know of a better website out there for half marathons, let me know as well down in the comments because I'm always struggling a little bit with half marathons, finding them because they're just not quite as uh, maybe publicized as big marathon races. Anyway, let me know if you have any other resources for half marathons. And that question of the day, do you use tune-up races in your overall racing schedule? Uh, and maybe you're just learning about tune-up races right now today on this vlog. That's great. Uh, but if you if you are well uh, versed in tune-up races, and yeah, just let us know no matter the distance. So I'd actually be curious to hear some thoughts from people that race like 5Ks and 3Ks and shorter races. Like what's your strategy for tuning up as far as timeline and yeah, just the timeline and the distance and the surface that you're racing on. So there you go, everyone. Okay, vlog's not done. I'm going inside. Onward and upward. Irving Half Marathon is the deal. We're going to be coming for you. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, just to get to some warmer weather for once. All right, here we go. I think he's getting a little bigger. Yeah, he looks a little bigger that. when you were just holding him on the chair. Whoa. So Papa takes care of his legs.
These are the cash cows. Cash cows going to going to Texas. That thing? Yeah. It's the strength in the leg. Michael, what you doing? No, no, no. What are you doing? Uh, monkey head. Come on now. Uh, uh, okay, hold. I'll get you. <laughs> Gotta keep an eye on this kid. Okay. Boom! Oh, don't pull pants. Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, careful, Michael. Oh. Michael's doing WWF over here. Careful. Here. <laughs> Keeps you nimble. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't realize their papa still has some athletic ability. Ah. <laughs> All right, Res WrestleMania is over. I survived somehow, and yes, I still got a little agility left in these legs, just a little bit, just a little bit. All right, boys, we're closing it. Gotta go to bed, tossing it back on the right to the last marathon training discussion uh, from about a month ago where I give some tips and tricks on marathon training. That'll be on the right, and then on the left, we'll toss it back to a race from 2019. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Good job, Michael. Okay, guys, can you...